Rebecca. My age, you know I've been to a lot of doctors. <laughs> Healthcare partners, they really care. They're concerned about your health. They're all the best. I am Roberta, and I am a healthcare partner. Visit hcpnv.com to hear my story. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereseemission.com or call 702-507-4172. News is also brought to you by Star Nursery. For all your landscape and gardening supplies right here in Pahrump, call 775-727-5300 for more information. Tonight on News 46, four people are taken to the hospital following an accident. The Knight County Sheriff installs another drug disposal unit. A firefighter shows kids how he prepares for his job. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell and Jason Koblenz. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, October 14th, 2013. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Jason Koblenz for News 46. A car carrying a mom and her three children barreled through a fence this morning on Elderberry Street. A single vehicle accident occurred this morning here on Elderberry Street. We're going to speak to Fire Chief Scott Lewis. So I understand the vehicle left the roadway, possibly related to a medical event preceding the actual collision between the perimeter fence of this dwelling behind us and then a concrete block wall that is located on the property as well. We found no entrapment today. We assessed four. Four are currently being transported to a local hospital. The mother has arrived on location and indicated that she wanted to be transported, and that's what we're completing at this time. Is the car drivable at this point? It appears that they're preparing to drive it from the scene, mm -hmm. so I believe that the uh, sheriff's deputies have deemed that it is uh, roadworthy. Mm -hmm. Were her injuries related to the accident or the medical issue and the accident? Undetermined at this time until we get into the hospital with the uh, driver, and they make that determination through their assessment. And nobody injured on the property here? No injuries on the property. And once again, that female was transported here to Desert View Hospital. They're saying at this time that she possibly had a seizure, which is the cause of this accident. The three children also were transported to be checked out by medical personnel. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Knight County Tax Assessor Shirley Madsen has issued a statement regarding the FBI seizure of computers in her office last week. This is a summary of her statement. She says, I am responding to an occurrence last Wednesday at the assessor's office in Pahrump, a subsequent article in the Pahrump Valley Times and the Las Vegas Review Journal. She says, this current assault on me is malicious harassment, false accusations, and retaliatory. Around 5 p.m., two reported FBI agents and many other officials came into her office and accused Matson of taking a CD post marked to the FBI and loading the information onto her county laptop, which was at her home office. She adds, I still do not have a possession of those computers, which are necessary to attend to my duties. There are several reports due to the Nevada Tax Board per Nevada law this month. I want to make this very clear. I was not shown a warrant to take the property from the county office, which is under my control. This has all the earmarks of an illegal search and seizure. I have nothing to hide. This public action of taking my computers has the appearance of theatrics to make me look as though I have done something wrong. If you would like to view the entire Madsen statement, go to our local Pahrump Facebook page. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is installing a med return drug disposal unit in the Pahrump Senior Center this week. Assistant Nye County Sheriff Rick Marshall explains the program. What you have seen here is that our uh, volunteer worker, Ben Gully, who runs our drug take-back program, is uh, disposing of the different prescription medications that were placed in our uh, prescription boxes located throughout the county. One of them at uh, Desert View Hospital. That's correct. And these are all different types of drugs. What's, what is actually okay to return in this med return box? Anything that people uh, want to get rid of, expired drugs, current drugs, 
um, both prescription and illegal. We'll accept anything uh, that helps get them off the streets. No questions asked. No questions asked. And it's open in the emergency area of the Desert View Hospital, so it's 24 hours a day. That's correct. Needles? No, we don't want needles. Yeah, so how does a person dispose of those? Or most people who are diabetics or use needles regularly know how to dispose of those, right? They do, and they can contact um, Scott Lewis mm -hmm. or Vance Payne, mm -hmm. uh, both with Prump Valley Fire and with uh, Nye County Emergency Services. They can also go online and just type in a proper needle disposal, and they'll come up with lots of hits on the web that tells them how to dispose of it properly. So uh, Ben goes and picks these up from the med returns areas, which there's going to be another one um, placed where? At the senior center. We're going to have a med return kit at the senior center as well. Uh, ben also goes out to people's homes if they're not able to go to any of our disposal areas. They can also bring them up here to the sheriff's office and drop them off. This is important. Why? It helps numerous ways. It, a lot of times people want to flush them down the toilets. We don't want them in the toilets. We don't want them in the septic systems. We don't want them out in our water tables. The other thing is that it ensures that they're disposed of properly and that they don't fall into uh, children's hands or adults' hands that should not be taking them. This all came about when uh, Nye County Sheriff uh, Tony DeMeo, um, actually, when his mother passed away, saw how many medications were left behind. And uh, this is pretty common. That's correct. And there have been times that uh, Ben has literally had a sharpening cart full of prescription meds that people have found in their homes after loved ones have passed away. So how does a person get in touch with the sheriff's office if they can't make it out to the med return areas? Um, what number should they call? 751-7000 and ask to be transferred to Ben Gully. And they can leave phone messages with them or they can leave a message with dispatch. They'll put a note in Ben's door and he'll make contact. Are you thinking about having surgery to correct your vision? Marty Salt gives the lowdown on LASIK, implantable contacts, and much more. Think you know everything there is to know about contact lenses and LASIK? We'll test your vision IQ next on Prescription Health. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. And welcome back to News 46. When it comes to wearing contact lenses or getting LASIK surgery, how acute is your vision IQ? Marty Salt has a story. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. Glasses, contacts, even surgery. We'll try anything to improve vision. The best thing to do for either in either case is to do your homework before you see a doctor. But what's your vision IQ? True or false? LASIK is a one-time procedure. <coughs> false. About 10.5% of LASIK patients in the US require a retreatment or enhancement. This applies to patients who have severe cases of eye conditions. You should ask what kind of retreatment rate do you have? I just don't think it's a permanent fix because it's not a permanent fix. It's a temporary fix. True or false? As long as your eye prescription is stable, you're a good candidate for LASIK. <coughs> false. Those with thin corneas and diabetics with reduced corneal sensation should avoid LASIK. What about contacts? If your contact is dried out, you can use saliva in a pinch. I might just take it out, spit on it, put it back in my eye. <coughs> Doctors say with all the bacteria in your mouth, you're just asking for an infection. Infections are brutal. Finally, true or false, sleeping in your lenses is okay as long as they're approved for that purpose. No patient should ever sleep in their contact lenses. It's well documented there's a seven times higher risk of corneal infect ulceration. And can lead to loss of vision. Separating fact from fiction, I'm Marty Salt reporting. Well, contacts and laser surgery aren't your only options for improved vision. Consumer Reports found implantable lenses had similar benefits to laser surgery. But implants are reversible and there's no risk of damaging your night vision. But no procedure is risk-free. Implantable lenses may increase your risk of cataracts. 
meeting between congressional leaders and President Barack Obama has been postponed to allow leaders in the Senate time to continue making important progress toward a solution. There appears to be a surge of optimism for a possible compromise to end the partial government shutdown and avoid a U.S. default as soon as this week. And about 400 Las Vegas Metro officers will begin re recording video through the use of so-called body cameras beginning in February. The idea of officers wearing cameras to record encounters with the public has been discussed and tested for more than a year. It will be officially implemented as a pilot program. Metro received a grant from the National Institute of Justice that will cover the cost of 200 cameras for officers. The department will foot the bill for the remaining 200 cameras. Metro estimates the total cost for cameras and equipment to be about $1.5 million. The department says video recorded by officers will be useful in the review of use of force cases and other internal investigations. And folks, I guess we'll be having more when we come back from this break. Keep it right here.